Hello and welcome to The Politics Show here in the West this Sunday. On the programme today... Oh. No! The BBC Panorama programme that uncovered this at a private hospital near Bristol. We talked to the man who blew the whistle on what was going on. And people take to the streets as the government plans to cut its bill for legal aid. First, the BBC's Panorama programme this week uncovered shocking scenes at a private hospital near Bristol. Abuse and violence on some of the most vulnerable patients were secretly filmed at Winterbourne View. What makes it worse is that the hospital and the government regulator were both approached by a whistleblower who had serious concerns about what was going on. In a minute, I'll be asking the politicians where we go from here. But joining me first is that whistleblower, Terry Bryan. Uh, Terry, uh, welcome. Uh, mm. What sort of week has it been for you? It's not been a good week. Um, the programme was so shocking, I think, for most people. Um, I've read endless comments on various forums. But for those of us that actually worked in it and recognised the people, um, I think it was worse. I've spoken to colleagues that worked with them, um, and we've all agreed it was unbelievably shocking. Um, the fallout from that, I think, is it's you cannot get it out of your mind. Mm. It's it's just stuck in my mind, and I just rolling it over and over again, and it's not good. It's not a good feeling. Well, uh, stay with us. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, Terry again a bit later on. But first, Dick and Hooper has this report, which does contain some distressing images on what happened when the BBC went undercover at Winterbourne View. This is the residential hospital at the centre of a national storm. And this is just one example of what the BBC found there. <laughs> That's Simon on the floor. He's a patient at Winterbourne View. He's now left the home. And this week, his mother Anne spoke to BBC Points West. We asked her what she'd like to say to the authorities. I want to tell these people to take this opportunity to look at the system in depth. It needs to be changed. Parents and families need to have more authority over what happens with their children. They should not be sidelined by people who don't know their children, who are just following guidelines of things to do. Because you had limited choices, We had you? no choice at all. We had no choice. We did not want Simon to go there, but we were overruled completely. The company which runs this institution has suspended 13 staff and apologise. Castlebeck has also set up a review, as has the local council, the government and its regulator. But none of them would give us an interview this week to answer our questions. So we went to the unions. A lot of public bodies don't want to speak out unless they become further embroiled in some legal battles, unless they say the wrong thing. But I think it's very sad because I think what, what the parents of those people in Winterbourne View want is for somebody to answer those difficult questions, for somebody to put their hands up and take some responsibility for what's happened and to say sorry and to be able to try and if they can't explain um, why things have gone wrong, then to say so. These pictures are from a 1980s documentary about the bad old days. We've been told before we wouldn't see this again, but the similarities to what happened to Simone and other patients are revealing and shocking because Terry Bryan, a former member of staff, blew the whistle on what was going on and it wasn't stopped. It's just horrible to watch it every time you see those images. Well, uh, Terry's uh, still with us. Terry, just talk us through it. What was your role at the hospital? Um, I was a charge nurse. I was um, a member of the senior management team. Um, myself and another charge nurse, um, and together with the manager and deputy manager, the four of us formed the senior management team. And what were your impressions when you arrived there? What, what concerned you? Um, First impressions were that it was chaotic, noisy. Um, alarms were going off all the time and nobody was turning them off. Not just basic alarms going off. Um, if people wanted something, they'd press an alarm in their room. So it's very noisy. Chaotic um, structure was missing. There was no occupation. 
people wandering around aimlessly. But you didn't see the, did you see any of the violence that we saw in the film? No, I saw bad practice, I saw bad attitudes, I saw chaos amongst the staff team. All right, that's now, all. Who did you complain to? I emailed the manager. Right, and who else? Well, initially the manager. Um, I had no response, so I emailed his line manager. I assumed over the following few weeks that the matter had gone to safeguarding because I had the whistleblowing policy that Castlebeck... That's an in-house in whistleblower... Yeah, Castlebeck. Uh, yeah, um, I see. I knew the procedure anyway, but um, I had it to refer to. Um, Safe Gloucestershire Safeguarding would have been um, contacted at some point over this period, a couple of weeks or so. But nothing was done. I had no nobody came back to me. And what about the Care Quality Commission, which is the sort of national watchdog? Well, when I received nothing back from anybody, I wasn't going to let it go. Um, and I contacted the Care Com Quality Commission. Um, twice I received automated emails back saying that they'd received my complaint. Um, but nobody contacted me further than that. OK, well, we asked for an interview with the Care Quality Commission. Uh, they've said no, but they did talk to Panorama. Let's just hear a clip of what they said. Yeah. We made a misjudgment, and as a result of that, had we acted at that time, as we've done, as we've done now, we can act very quickly to cease that kind of treatment. We missed that chance, and we're sorry for that, and we're doing everything we can now to make sure we're responding properly. So they're sorry. Do you accept that? Everyone's held their hands up and said that um, things have gone wrong in this process. I think it's gone beyond blame. I just think it's all about the next actions that are important. You can blame people left, right and centre. There's enough of that in the media. Did you ever see anything, Terry, that was bad enough that you could have picked up the phone and actually dialed 999 and got the cops? No. So I it wasn't on that level no. when you saw it? So well, what did you think when you saw the program? Well, that's why I found the film shocking, because... What I saw was enough to get people suspended and nothing was done. People were still on the floor, still working. Um, what I saw, as I say, was bad practices, bad attitudes. So well, it was shouting, general low-level stuff rather than anything which just, needed immediate response. Yes, just amateurs not really knowing what they were doing. I mean, just to explain a bit about the patients here. I mean, the term used by the uh, social services industry, if you like, is uh, people with learning difficulties. But that barely begins to tell the full story. They, no, they are very challenged, aren't they, with their behaviour and so on? Some of the people there um, had learning difficulties. They had um, um, intellectual difficulties. Other people had mental health needs. Other people were, um, um, had personality disorders, mental health issues such as that. Um, we had, we've had people there with um, um, suicidal tendencies, people with self-harm so regularly. It, I mean, so hard to look variety. after. I mean, and if you did a 12-hour shift, you, at the end of it, you'd know it. Everybody in that unit, and there were 24 people, up to 24, everybody needed individual s programmed support to enable them to live and survive and thrive. Wh what would you like to see done to uh, Winterbourne View now? Winterbourne View itself will close, I'm sure. That, as, a, as a model for supporting people with really complex needs. It needs to be done in, on an individual basis, not with 12 people milling around, all being herded from one room to another. It used to be called things like warehousing. And you see in old films, it hasn't gone away. OK, Terry, well, uh, you've had a very busy week. Thank you for coming in, and uh, thank you for raising the alarm. Thank you. Pleasure. The political fallout from the Panorama programme has been huge. The government says it wants answers from its regulator, the Care Quality Commission, and from local authorities. Neither would give us an interview. The Health Select Committee has said it's going to look at the whole issue of social care in the autumn. So here to discuss the politics is Robert Buckland, the Conservative MP for Swindon, who sits on the all-party parliamentary group on autism and education and the former Labour MP for Kingswood, Roger Berry, who's had a long-standing interest in disability issues. Welcome to you both. Uh, first, the issue of accountability. It's frustrating uh, for us as journalists not to be able to grill those responsible. They won't come on the, on the programme. But it must be even more frustrating 
for the parents of those young people in that institution. What is it about this country where people won't stand up and say, this is what happened? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head here. A lot of the decisions were being made about these vulnerable people without the consent of their families. And that is fundamentally wrong. If we're not involving the carers and the parents of the, young pe of the people themselves, then why are we talking about a care system? It seems to me to be a negation, frankly. I mean, I, I think the model is largely broken, and we need to look again at looking after these people, either in their homes with their loved ones, giving them respite care, and changing the model of, of our approach to people with disabilities. Is it faceless, Roger, dealing with you know, social services yeah. and so on, if you've got a disabled well, child? Um, I think it depends with whom you're dealing. I mean, it depends on the particular, particular case. but. It can be, if, as, in, as would appear to be the case here, that we're talking about shunting um, people with learning difficulties into an institution uh, miles away from where they live, miles away from the community in which they live. And that inevitably, and we saw this in the film, it makes it very difficult for parents and carers to know what's going on. I mean, the idea that they didn't have access to substantial parts of this building seems to me extraordinary, if true. Um, so there is, there is a problem, there's a serious problem there, but I, mean, I think it's getting rid of institutions um, like Winterbourne View, I, don't, I think the days have long gone since the large institutional approach made any sense at all. It never did, actually, and it certainly doesn't make sense but now. I mean, to put the tin hat on it, it's costing the taxpayer £3,500 per person per week. Per week. Yes. Mm. Yep. I mean, did you think, what were the local authorities thinking of when they wrote those cheques? Did they not think well, to, to go and see if the care was all right? Well, we need answers to that question because they should, perfectly clearly, whether it was a local council, whether it was a primary care trust, whoever was paying for the £3,500 per person per week um, should... Uh, they have a duty of care. They've got to ensure that um, what they're providing, which I, I, I guess was meant to be care and support, although precious little evidence in the programme, um, if they're purchasing care and support for individuals, they should, of course they should be checking, and that's we need to have in the public domain answers from each of the... We know, we know which councils and which primary care trusts were purchasing care and what they were doing to we monitor We know what it. will happen. They'll, be, they'll all say we're having inquiries, and then the inquiry... Then we can't speak because we're having an inquiry. That will go on for months, and then they'll say, well, we... Uh, this is what happened then, but that's history. We want to draw a line and move on. That's what, what will happen, isn't it? There, no one will be held to account, or do you think they will be? Oh, I think, I think they will be held to account. Do I you mean, think anyone it, will it, lose their jobs over this? Well, it's very interesting. Um, we have seen in, in areas of child protection um, where the public have, have demanded severe penalties be imposed, understandably, uh, on, on, on people who've um, not done their jobs properly. You asked the question, is this an isolated case? I hope so, but I don't know is the answer. And of course it casts cast a question over uh, existing care workers who are doing a great job out there Ex and they feel nervous and anxious about what's to happen with them. But the point remains that not once, not twice, but three times was this issue raised with the CQC yes. and a fundamental issue now arises about the effect effectiveness of that organisation. Uh, the other question that comes up really is is this more likely to happen in a privately run institution where the bosses perhaps have got their eye on the bottom line rather than on patient care? Does this affect what you think about the privatisation of certain vital services? I think there's little doubt that an organisation that exists to, to, to make a profit will make decisions differently from one whose sole purpose is to provide care irrespective of the financial situation. I mean, that's but but I mean, having said that, I think, I think the real issue here uh, in terms of the needs of people with learning disabilities is to provide that care and support locally in their communities. I think when you, you shut them off to institutions, that's when you get the problem. And frankly, you get that problem, or you can get that problem, whether they are publicly run or privately run. I agree with Roger. I, I think the nature of the ownership is actually secondary because let's not forget the voluntary sector as well, many of whom do a great job in the local community giving opportunities for people But this comes when the, to the, dis the Tories want to privatise or well, want to bring in more private companies into well, the NHS. Well, want to develop a wider system of provision and to underpin it all with quality. And I was interested to see that clauses in the bill relating to the, the CQC will incorporate Health Watch England as part of that mechanism to make it easier to blow the whistle, to make complaints and to get proper investigations into poor quality. One last question because uh, our time is going very quickly but some of the most heartbreaking emails I've had are from people whose parents who say 
I'm worried about the day I die, not for me, but because that's the day my child has got to fend for themselves. And the only comfort up until now is that they've got the state to look after them, to say, look after my child. Can you offer them any reassurance? The, 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 state has, the state has to provide that reassurance. Can it, can it, it actually cannot delegate it to other people. At the end of the day, when there's a crisis uh, of this kind... Can it be relied on, though? Well, um, can they rely on it now? We are now looking to government. It is, it is government that's going to sort out the mess. OK. Thank you both very much indeed. Well, finally, from me today, can you put a price on justice? Everyone agrees that access to courts and lawyers...